speaking uh, or after hearing those two distinguished uh, speakers, it's very difficult to know what a farmer from Africa will be here to say. <laughs> and seeing that I have only four minutes, I think all I do is to sing a few points and hope that they will make sense. Now, we have been told many times that agriculture is both a culprit and a victim of climate change. When you talk of agriculture being a culprit, there are two aspects of that. One is the natural biological causes uh, of uh, climatic change. Then there are those that are man-made or man-made and which are preventable. In Africa, man-made causes include deforestation, cultivation of river banks, burning of forests, and uh, many other practices that contribute very adversely to climate change. But it is important to note that all of these practices emanate from one thing in Africa, poverty. And I must emphasize that uh, poverty is one or in fact the major causes of the habits that uh, contribute to adverse climatic change in Africa. <laughs> and if we found ways of containing poverty, we shall have, have won the half of the battle. Indeed, the problem is so serious that when we look at the world at large, we require a very drastic uh, step, very drastic action, and I would say that what we require now is no less than a Marshall Plan. A Marshall Plan, we had a Marshall Plan in Western Europe after the World War II where a lot of money was invested in order to bring back the Western nations to their feet. So what we require now in the world is a Marshall Plan to overcome this uh, problem. Now, when you look at uh, Africa, and this applies to developing countries, examples of how these uh, funds can be put in use very effectively is, for example, assisting farmers with inputs. And we have seen the examples of this. We have heard of Malawi, which was a food deficient country about two years ago, is now a food surplus country, just because they were assisted with fertilizer. And what is happening now in Malawi? The farmers are investing this money, this newly earned money, into projects like uh, solar heating uh, panels for their homes. They are investing for projects to harvest water. So injecting money into fertilizer has caused these farmers voluntarily to undertake steps that go very far into affecting the adverse effects of climate change. In Kenya we have the same example. The government started giving fertilizers to farmers a year ago, and the, and the farmers have now harvested more than 10 times what they used to harvest. And what are they doing with this money? The same. They are now going into purchasing solar systems for their home heating. They have gone into harvesting water. They have gone into even uh, buying solar torches and mechanically run torches. These are some of the small things that uh, farmers do when they have been assisted to raise their income. And I think this is what things should be encouraged. In fact, I've seen that uh, there is a proposal by Tuvalu during this conference, whereby they are asking for the uh, world leaders to come up with a commercial paper, a bond, to assist the farmers to adapt and mitigate climate change. And the interest to be paid to investors on these bonds to be paid by the uh, government. 
both from the developing countries and from developed countries. And I think this is something that we should support. This is to fund a project that we should come up with a bond to assist farmers to mitigate climate change. And this should be coupled again with uh, further advancement or development of the carbon fund. And when we come to the major gaps at the moment, what farmers in Africa require and in most of the developing countries is, is information, empirical information about the effects of uh, some of the habits to climate change. They want to know what, uh, what is this climate change, how does it come about, how do their habits affect it, and what is the result? For example, what we have been, just been given now by Professor Swamanamitha, that uh, a rise in temperature of one degree reduces rice harvest by six million tons. These are the kind of information that farmers in Africa want to know so that they can know exactly how their habits impacted on it. The other thing is that uh, farmers in developing countries need information on meteorological facts. Accurate information to your assistance. We have been told in Kenya that there's going to be a tsunami. We were told last year there will be a big tsunami towards the end of this year. And we've been waiting for the tsunami. It hasn't come. And uh, last week we were told, yes, the tsunami might come, but it might not come. So when a farmer is told there's going to be a tsunami, but it may not come, what kind of information will be given? It means that the farmer goes on losing because he harvests, he puts a fertilizer, and yet the rain does not come because he does not have the proper information. So it is very important that uh, we get uh, proper meteorological information so that the farmers can uh, mitigate some of these adverse effects. I'm told that my time is over, and thank you very much.